Welcome Cardiology Update, uh, listeners and viewers. My name is Shad Reyes. This is a TCT wrap-up. TCT 2023 finished in October 2023 and had a lot of trials, mainly heavy, a lot of structural heart interventions, but also some coronary intervention focusing on physiology and imaging. In this uh, video, I'm going to summarize uh, major, major trials that are have impact for result, as well as that the things that can be changing the practice and possibly the guideline. I'm going to start with the PARTNER3 low-risk trial. This is a study that was found that low-risk patient with severe symptomatic aortic stenosis and had a significant lower rate of combined outcome of death, stroke, MI, and rehospitalization in one year when compared with transcatheter aortic valve replacement compared to surgery. At TCT 2023, uh, the findings of five years follow-up, as we know this is presented before three years, but now this is five years follow-up, these results were simultaneously published in the New England Journal of Medicine and indeed showed a consistent result compared to three years ago. Again, these are findings are very impactful and also promising for patients with severe aortic stenosis who underwent TAVR compared to SAVR. On the same track, also Evolute low-risk trial, simultaneously published at also the JAK journal, and present, uh, presented trend of indication for lower combined rates of all-cause mortality, as well as disabling stroke with TAVR compared to SAVR. And this is, again, a promising result for patients who have severe aortic stenosis and low uh, risk score. Again, something we have to keep uh, aware of, and this is still valid till now, that... Um, Fortunately or unfortunately not answered yet, uh, as we know, we're implanting more patients who are low risk with TAVR. We don't know the durability of these valves. So far, results for 10 years follow-up are favorable. However, there is no large randomized trial. It's all registry-based data showing that these patients still have good outcome long term. However, beyond 10 years, what is the durability of these valves? If there's self-expanding versus balloon expanding, this is yet to be discovered and yet to be studied in the future. Moving along to a line AR trial, examined patient with severe aortic regurgitation. This is the first aortic regurgitation trial uh, and high-risk intervention for patient undergoing the transcatheter heart intervention with transcatheter valve. And uh, the trial involved 180 uh, symptomatic AR patients. And as we know from the AS before, we started with extremely high surgical risk. Now, same thing, they started with a high-risk surgical candidate and considered unsuitable for surgical intervention and therefore underwent the study. Notably, the study met the primary endpoint at 30 days safety goal uh, and one year's efficacy goal for all-cause mortality. And also, the rate of new pacemaker was observed to decrease from 24 to 14 in the later portion of enrolling patients. That speaks to the technique used as well as the operator getting more familiar with the equipment itself. Another promising study for patients who are uh, suffering with aortic regurgitation who are extreme or high risk for surgery. Uh, intervention. Um, moreover, to the VIVA trial, uh, it's aimed to determine the optimal treatment for patients with severe aortic stenosis and a small aortic annulus. Uh, this is very important because, as we know, sometimes if the patient requires small valve, we usually refrain from doing TAVR and refer them to surgery for annuloplasty or uh, annulus expansion before the implanting the valve. But yet, the, the study is looking into if implanting a small valve will associate with Bauer's outcome compared to sending this patient to surgery. Here you go. They compared the outcome of transcatheter or TAVR compared to SAVR and a specific cohort of patients who have severe or small annulus. And the study involved 150 patients in both arms. And the primary outcome assessed impaired valve hemodynamics, which is very important. You don't want to create SSM or something called uh, uh, create stenosis after implanting the valve. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, the patient uh, underwent this uh, intervention and showed that the impaired valve hemodynamic, specifically severe proceeded uh, patient mismatch or PPM or moderate aortic valve regurgitation. At 30 days, as a result, showed there was no significant difference in the terms of hemodynamic difference between TAVR and SAVR in both groups at 60 days, as well as mortality and stroke were no different at 30 days. And the follow-up median was two years. There was no significant difference between the two groups in terms of mortality, stroke, and cardiac hospitalization. So, Interestingly, also, only 20, I think, as far as I remember, percent of these patients underwent annual expansion surgery who are referred to SAVR. So again, regardless if we send this patient to surgery for annuloplasty or not, it is not going to be... Uh, 
uh, doable or maybe not the patient not candidate for it and not going to help the patient. So this is a good discussion again in the work uh, and the heart team approach to speak with the surgeon as well as the interventionist and the patient and put all options on the table, but definitely favorable outcome uh, in this and safety outcome in TAVR, in TAVR patient with small analysis. Moving along from the structural, moving to the agent IDE trial. This is aimed to evaluate the safety and effectiveness of Paxilactaxel coated balloon, which is a DCB for coronary intervention in patient with ISR, instant restenosis. The trial concluded that the uh, this uh, the study was effective in reducing target lesion failure in the treatment of coronary ISR. And this is the first trial in the U.S. As we know, this therapy are, are, therapies are available in Europe, DCP for coronary uh, ISR, but we don't have it in the U.S. And this is the first study that presented by Bobby Ye studying the IS, uh, DCB in patient with ISR. Uh, patient, uh, the study eligible patient were randomly assigned to DCB or angioplasty alone as we do now. There is not too many patients who underwent uh, laser atherectomy. Majority was just been a plain balloon angioplasty with a word cutting balloon or with non-compliant balloon. And again, it shows significant difference with 17.9 DCB compared to 28 uh, balloon angioplasty. The result uh, show meeting the uh, target uh, lesion failure at one year. Good result promising hopefully that will help us get approval in the u.s for these balloons for this cohort of patients specifically since these limit these patients have limited options for a treatment of isr Moving along also on the same track on DCB ACS trial, the use of drug coated balloon uh, was examined as a potential strategy for treating patients with acute coronary syndrome who had a novo lesion, de novo lesion, meaning the previous study was for ISR. This is for de novo lesion. This patient population often faces challenges for stent related complication following percutaneous intervention, whether it's a small vessel, this is uh, bifurcating, or how to deliver stenting. The DCB ACS trial finding revealed that the DCB were non inferior to the drug routing. Uh, when it compared to uh, treating de novo lesions. And the primary uh, uh, endpoint was assessment on functional condition of the target lesion at nine months and showed no significant difference between the two groups. However, in terms of the angiographic follow-up, at nine months, the DCB group had a slightly higher in segment diameter stenosis compared to DCB. No surprise because you are deploying uh, uh, the drug without any... Uh, uh, polymer. So this is going to be some recoiling uh, involved as we see before in the shock, uh, shock wave, for example, and the below knee intervention, there's some recoil happen uh, over the period of time. However, this is not significant uh, compared to the DCB. Uh, moreover, the study found that also DCB has a, a, a DCB and DES groups has similar risk profile for target uh, lesion uh, outcome patient-oriented composite endpoint at 12 months, and also uh, both of these st studies were safety and with no major complication. Again, two studies again presented for DCB and coronary, one for ISR and one for de novo lesion. Promising good news for the coronaries and hopefully more options for the patient who have ISR. TPAS study, moving to this study, investigator whether switching to ticagular monotherapy. Okay, this is an antiplatelet agent therapy, single ticagular uh, monotherapy within one month after implantation of DCP was non inferior to a standard 12 month regimen of ticagular based dual antiplatelet therapy for patient of ACS. So again, patients who are presented with ACS were randomly assigned to 12 months dual antiplatelet therapy, which is standard of care for ACS and by guidelines, or in the U.S. guidelines, or to uh, one monotherapy starting after 30 days of dual antiplatelet therapy using the higher and potent P2O12 inhibitor. The study involved a few thousand patients and in the South Korea and received uh, DES for sure. And then results showed that discontinuing aspirin within one month for uh, ticagular uh, monotherapy was non inferior and, sub and superior for 12 months depth in terms of one year com uh, composite outcome, which include lower rate of death, myocardial infarction, and thrombosis, stroke, which and major bleeding for sure. But the concern was in this study if there is increased stent thrombosis or increased risk of um, uh, uh, clotting. But here you show it's, it's a safe and effective. However, the relatively low event rate in the trial uh, could suggest that this uh, lower risk profile were enrolled in, uh, in these patients considered to be interpreting the result. Again, what they are pointing out here is um, uh, there is a difference in the patient uh, 
uh, and a comfort between the variability in the operator suggesting one therapy versus the other. Uh, however, uh, uh, potential, uh, the, the, the dual antiplatelet therapy was a bit favorable with less thrombosis risk, but this was not statistically significant. Moving along now to the other structural, which is WASH TAVR trial. This is uh, presented by Dr. Uh, Samir Kapadia from Cleveland Clinic. Was a multicenter randomized aim to assess the safety and efficacy of TAVR and left anterior appendage using Watchman device in patient with atrial fibrillation. Patient was randomly to one to one TAVR plus at the same setting, left atrial appendage occlusion, as well as TAVR medical therapy, the study revealed combined procedure TAVR, non inferior to TAVR alone, with medical treatment in patients with severe aortic stenosis and AFib. Again, this is, uh, I think, a study very convenient for patients. I will make them, uh, they'll go one procedure at, uh, at the same time. You're getting a venous access as well as arterial access. I don't know how the insurance and how the reimbursement gonna gonna play in these situations when you are doing two procedures at the same time, especially in the US. I'm speaking specifically about the US, but again, good option for the patient and you can make argue with the, uh, uh, with the insurance. I think that should be okay as well. But this one question comes during discussion. The health status analysis uh, uh, stemming from the tr triluminate pivotal trial, triluminate as we presented before, this is a study that looked into tricuspid valve intervention and clipping. Uh, they examined the data from 350 patients with severe tricuspid regurgitation. These studies were randomly divided into two groups, uh, one tricuspid catheter, uh, tricuspid clipping, and the other one was receiving medical therapy. The study assessed patient health status, and at, at, which is the KCCQ uh, uh, survey, and results showed that patients who received the CLIP or T tier was a superior to medical therapy alone and composite endpoint of including on cause death and tricuspid valve surgery, heart failure, hospitalization, and substantial increase in the uh, heart failure survey. This superiority was mainly driven by the health status improvement of these patients. They are doing better, less congested, less liver congestion, less anasarca, less also um, ascites, so they are preventing their hospitalization. The study suggests that the patient with lower baseline uh, QCCQ score who are more likely to experience symptomatic improvement after a tear could be ideal candidate for this intervention going forward. Again, a very promising study. Again, always, if the first study, always we look at, we, uh, we, we hope you have a mortality difference, but this is a very significant finding from Triluminate showing that Triluminate definitely, our tricuspid valve clipping doesn't, it does really help symptoms, hospitalization, heart failure. But I think with a larger number of movement, larger acquisition of this intervention, we're going to see improvement in mortality down the line. Finally, is the TRISEN2 trial. This is an initial assessment of uh, tricuspid valve replacement using the uh, uh, EVOQ uh, system. This is a com complete uh, kind of uh, trans uh, replacement of the valve instead of clipping alone, as we mentioned earlier, and triluminate, focusing on the first 150 enrolled patient. The rate of major adverse event was lower uh, than expected at 27.4 uh, versus 43.8 percent. Early finding from the trial revealed that. Uh, the tricuspid valve replacement completely effectively uh, effectively eliminated tricuspid regurgitation in the majority of patients, even among patients with severe TR, including those with massive or torrential TR. Uh, these uh, emphasize, this uh, author also emphasized that treating severe TR with a uh, replacement system led to the significant improvement in the functional status of the patient at six months. It's also worth noting that the TRISEND2 uh, trial is designed based on the US FDA uh, designation. And then more comprehensive and more demographic and echographic data are going to be uh, presented uh, when we have, when the, when the author have the full cohort of patient involvement, which is the goal is to have 400 cohort patients involved in this. Uh, trial. Again, uh, another good study, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, TCT was very rich in terms of studying structural as well as coronary. Uh, there's other some hot topics in intervention. Uh, we covered them before, um, but please stay tuned to all the publication coming from uh, the uh, cardiology update. Uh, this is going to come to you on all social media platform, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, or X, and this is going to be uh, up to date as well as we're going to come to you every every uh, major conference with update and wrap-ups highlighting the significant trials that are presented and how this is going to impact the practice going forward. Thank you again for watching me. This is Shadi Reis from Detroit Medical Center in Detroit, Michigan, USA, and you are watching Cardiology Update. Thank you for watching.